Welcome to another episode of the HRC Marathon Training Vlog. MK here with my good friend, Nam Young and Haven. We just are on the tail end of our medium long run where Haven and I did 12 miles with speed play. And boy, was well, it a good one. Here's how the warm up miles went down this morning. All right, this is mile one in 901. Okay, that's mile two, 913. Getting warm. Okay, it's mile three in 922. And we're gonna start our one minute ons. It was a cold and dark morning, but we were able to get those warm up miles done. And we jumped right in to our speed play. This morning, we did 10 one minute ons with followed by one minute offs. And we did those at Haven's VO2 max pace. Here are the paces for those 10 one minute ons on the graphic. That was some awesome work this morning. I think a lot of our subscribers who are trying to go sub four or sub 345, they're gonna get a lot of inspiration from you on that workout. Really well done, Haven. Thank you. This makes the second day in a row of back-to-back -back hard workouts for Haven. So it's a successful one, and then that makes those two days momentum. That's what we call momentum here. So let's take that momentum, enjoy tomorrow's recovery day, really enjoy it. Enjoy what it feels like to have an unfocused run. And then get hyped up for a really good Friday workout, okay? okay. And we're gonna do a threshold workout on Friday so that we can have balance and dynamic running for the week. All right, let's go. I just wanna throw a shout out to my good friend Justin for signing up for his very first marathon at the LA Marathon in March. It's so freaking awesome. Justin also had a question because it's his first marathon and I'm assuming that also means that he's a beginner runner. He had some trouble trying to figure out what his paces should be based on some marathon plans that he's been able to find. So we find a plan that we want online or in a book and then how do we get started? How do we nail down which pieces to use at the beginning of the training block? All right, let's go. Nice work. Good job. Nice work. If you're just getting started, and you've never run a marathon race before, and you don't have any other benchmark races to do race equivalents, predict what a marathon finishing time could be, then simply do the different workouts based on heart rate rather than paces. So your marathon training plan will likely have an easy pace heart rate range as well, where you should be targeting your heart rate during easy pace runs at the low end and at the high end of a certain beats per minute. In order to understand your heart rate training zones, you'll need to know your max heart rate. In order to calculate your max heart rate, you can take 220 minus your age to estimate 
what your max heart rate could be. This isn't totally accurate, but it's a good start. And then based on your max heart rate, you can find out where your heart rate training zones are and then train to those zones. While you train to those zones, you'll have all your data either on your GPS watch app or on Strava. Go back to your data and then see what paces align with those training zones so that you can understand what paces match up with your easy pace, what paces match up with your steady state, marathon pace, tempo, VA2 max, and repetition. Then as you continue on with your training build, you can hone in on more accurate paces by doing race equivalent tests. For example, if you have VO2 max interval progressions and one day you're, you feel like you're fit enough to run a 5K race equivalent, you can go ahead and do it. You can use that 5K time trial time to estimate based on a calculator what your marathon time could possibly be. If you're doing tempo runs, and let's say that you are only capable of doing maybe broken tempo runs for about four miles, but if you could progress that to an unbroken tempo run to six miles, then you might want to try to do a 10K time trial. And you can use that 10K time trial time to find out what your race equivalent would be for a possible marathon. Once you have those numbers, you can punch in the VDOT calculator, the estimated finish time for those race equivalent, either 10Ks or 5Ks. And then you can use those VDOT calculated paces as your training paces. So in summary, if you don't know, then use your heart rate. And if you do know, then maybe use heart rate as something to analyze post-workout rather than during the workout and use training paces instead during the workout. Always keep in mind that weather, your condition on the day, the terrain and undulation in the terrain will always affect paces. And don't redline or overwork when those factors come into play. Justin, since you're just starting out, don't worry about being too accurate. You can trust the max heart rate calculator based on age a little bit more since you're starting out running for the first time. This calculator doesn't really work well for me since my max heart rate goes above 190 and for being a 48 year old runner, it doesn't align very well. So like I said before, the max heart rate calculator based on age is not super accurate, but it'll do the job for somebody who's starting out running for the very first time or who's restarting running after a long time off. Thanks everybody for coming along with us on this very, very well executed medium long run with Haven. Wow, she showed a lot of courage today and I know that it's hard for her, especially in this time of her life when she's going through a lot of changes and tough times at school, heavy course loads. Yeah, it's a big ask, but it takes a lot of grit and resolve and courage to make a decision and to make a marathon a personal goal of hers. I hope you can find some motivation watching Haven do these workouts and get some confidence and inspiration to go out and do your medium long run workouts and 
crush that 345 or 330 marathon goal that you may have. Thanks for joining me on this talk about how to get started in marathon training using heart rate and then switching over to training VDOT paces. Don't forget, you can visit me on Strava by searching for Michael Kim at All Heart RC and join our Strava club by searching for AHRC. You can visit us on Instagram at All Heart RC. Give this video a like, give the algorithm a push, smash that subscribe button helps our channel a lot. Today is the day. <laughs> I can't believe I'm going to say it, but today's the day that we're going to hit 1,000 subscribers. Can't believe it. I can't believe it. Thank you so much. I'm going to finish up this run and enjoy the rest of my day. I hope you have a great day and a meaningful run. I'll see you in the next one. Bye now and thank you. So, I think at the beginning of the training plan or training block, some kind of pain will come. And I think I used to just totally freaked out and Stop running all together and hopefully uh, that little pain doesn't slow you down and just kind of take it easy but just keep on moving and uh, it's going to be a series of these pain that will come up through throughout your uh, uh, training plan until marathon day. I guess there's a difference between a niggle and an injury huh? <laughs> yeah exactly. And you can get up and move the next day and the pain goes away after a mile to warm up then I think that's okay. Thanks, Nanny, huh? Yeah.